Water evaporates in the oceans. Small water molecules change from water to water vapor by the heat of the sun. Although water vapor is invisible, there is a lot of water vapor in the air. The warmer the air, the more water vapor the air can contain. The water vapor rises just like the heated air. Higher in the atmosphere, it's colder. Cold air can contain less water vapor. If the temperature is low enough, the water vapor condenses. We call this temperature the dew point. If it is colder than the dew point, water vapor will condense. This can be seen as a cloud. We can imagine the dew point as a temperature limit. Below this temperature limit, the air is still warm enough and can hold enough water. Above this temperature limit, the air is too cold to hold so much water vapor, causing condensation to occur. The base of clouds is usually also a horizontal surface, because the temperature is still too high for condensation under that surface. Condensing water vapor does not mean that the water is heavy enough to fall down. For example, we often see clouds that do not cause rain. First, enough water vapor must condense. The water molecules then have to collide, so that the water drop is large and heavy enough, so that the water droplets fall like rain. Around the equator, the sun is often high in the sky and it's very hot. Water is heated and condenses. The air is also heated and warm air can contain a lot of water vapor. Because the air column is warm, it expands. Because this air column expands, it's lighter than the surrounding air. We call this a low pressure area. The warm air and the water vapor therefore rise. Higher in the atmosphere, it is colder, causing the water vapor to condense. Eventually, it starts to rain. That is why it often rains around the equator at the end of the afternoon. Water evaporates throughout the day and the air is heated. At the end of the afternoon, there is a lot of water in the atmosphere, which condenses and eventually falls down like rain. Because it is very warm around the equator and often raining, we often find tropical rainforests such as Brazil, Africa and Indonesia. The air sinks again around the 25th degree of latitude. There is little water vapor left in the air because it has already rained. Because the air drops, the air gets warmer so that the remaining water vapor does not condense. It does not rain frequently around these areas. It is therefore no wonder that the largest deserts are located around the 25th latitude. Some examples of these deserts are the Sahara, the Kalahari, the Arabian Desert and the Great Victoria Desert. Around the 60th latitude, cold air from the polar regions collides with the hot air from the 30th latitude. The warm air contains more water vapor and is lighter, which causes it to rise. Then the water vapor condenses and it rains. Because two air masses, those of the polar regions and those of the 30th degree of latitude, collide with each other, this is called frontal rain. The air must rise as a result of the collision, causing it to rain. In the polar regions, there is again a high pressure area. This causes falling air, so there is not much precipitation in the polar regions. Moreover, the air is cold, so there is little water vapor in the air. In a low pressure area, it is often cloudy and it rains. In a high pressure area, it is often sunny. Remember that the air pressure only says something about the presence of clouds and the chance of rain, and that it says nothing about the temperature of an area.